Time for the uh, big guns for the uh, retirement fund. It's a movie based uh, game for the C64. No, not Bridget Nielsen's big fake tits, the ugly bitch. She looks like a man. Like a man! Still can't remember his name, but his name was Grant Mitchell in EastEnders. You know the one. Oh, Ross Kemp. I believe it's Ross Kemp. Yeah, it is, because it's like, you've got a man up. Or oh, Kemp Dan! Now, you have to watch Phone Shop to understand any of these. But no, it's Alien. And we've got two copies. There you go, just so you believe me, there you go. They're both Alien. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Ah. The cases are too big to get in front of the camera, you see. There you go, Alien. Do, 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 do. I believe Lucosa likes this game. I believe CVG thought it was shit and uh, Paul Clancy, who wrote it, uh, wrote in to complain. They had a real fucking... Uh, what's it called? Nerd rage about it. And like a Patreon freak, he wrote far too much, so... Yeah, there's no screws on the tape, so if you don't know, like, but uh, let's see how far we get with this shit. Right, so, this one. So, someone sliced off about half a centimetre off the top, because you can't see where it says uh, navigator. Anyway. Manuals in mint condition, pretty much. And I do believe the instructions are on about how pretentious. Uh, of the inlay, there is some shit going on there. There you go. I see the back of it. There you go. Is the real deal, sir? Now, me personally, I'd rather be uh, doing some decorating than uh, actually playing. Alien, because uh, I don't really like the game. I did have a quick look at it and uh, what you've got to do and uh, what's written in the manual and uh, blah blah blah. You have to read all this, uh, you know. Fucking, uh, it's like a comic version of uh, Alien the movie. Maybe if you haven't got, you know, an hour forty-five minutes, whatever, to watch your film. Yeah, I can see why it's basically a strategy game and uh, you wouldn't expect someone to do a strategy like resource management, whatever type game for fucking Alien. That's a problem. It's a bit like Airwolf. Airwolf might have been an okay game if it came out on budget. Uh, look how shit that is. Look at that. It's a fucking bunch of cock, mate. It's definitely a bit of early bedroom coding without Tony Crowther's programming skills or Jeff Minder's. So anyway, what can we uh, talk about now, Dick? Because there's going to be no loading music, no loading picture. But anyway, it don't really matter. These are purely for the retirement fund. I only care if they load and the condition they're in. I don't, I'm not going to keep them. Now with a VCS it's a bit different. Because I can't actually play, you know, emulator files on a real VCS. So if there's any games I like on the VCS or even the 7800 I have to fucking buy them. Which is a bit of a problem because Dark Chambers is extremely rare and extremely overpriced in the UK. There was a copy in America which was uh, about 50 or 60 dollars which was in the same condition as one that some knob was trying to sell for like 130, 140 on eBay UK. And it work on both anyway. Power or NTSC machine. But the problem is the postage. The postage was like a fucking hundred dollars or something. I was like, fuck you. 
So I actually worked out the same price. But only because the postage costs getting anything from America are so ridiculous nowadays. Maybe it's uh, the way eBay like to do it with full tracking in it. Right, anyway, it's overpriced. So yeah, we've got to uh, clean the dust off the skirting boards a bit more and uh, redo some of the masking tape. Uh, where did I put that tub? Oh yeah, it's on the uh, coffee table downstairs. There's a couple of tiny little bits that need filling. I'm dab a bit of paint on them today. And uh, if there's any walls that don't need any more refilling, then I'll, I'll do a whole wall at a time. And we're going to have a, a nice thick coat of paint on there to even out the surface as much as possible. Because I might use a projector in there. The thing is, it's like it's a bit like the uh, light blue colour of the uh, C64 palette. The colour that room is. This is sort of like medium grey of the C64 palette, this room. But it's always going to be dark green, like the Amstrad CPC dark green. So it's darker than the green. The, the green on the C64 palette is way too bright. <laughs> I believe this is Russell Lee Blick's music, I think. Why doesn't it say in space no one can hear you scream? We well, aren't about to fucking breathe in space for a start. Right? So it looks like a 1982 Spectrum game and that's what people don't like. Music's probably the best bit of it. But it's only one channel. Best one channel tune I've heard for yonks. But, uh, that's enough of that, mate. So this copy, mint case, mint manual. Bit chopped off the top. This one, not chopped off the top. This hasn't been circumcised, the uh, cardboard inlay. And the cassette isn't rewound, fucking dumb cunt. So it's probably loaded on this side. It's doesn't appear to be any damage, luckily, because let's try it on the side that it wasn't rewound to. If I press shift run stop now the screen will blank out. But you get an idea of the colour of the uh, bedroom. It is that kind of colour. So I don't know what the projector is going to look like. Obviously like some fucking uh, millennial. I didn't buy a shit projector. Budget 4K projector. What's the fucking point mate? If the, uh, if the fucking... The projected image looks like fucking plastic, it's like a fucking plastic bag or something. So this is one of those games you probably have to sell first, and then leave it for like three months, and then sell the second copy last. So if I was going to sell Ghosts and Goblins, I'd have to do the same with that as well. Now, of course, if someone so shows you a screenshot of a game that's loaded, it doesn't actually mean the game will load on your fucking tape deck. It says Argus Press Software, where it doesn't say, oh, presents Alien. 
I thought it was a fucking load there right there. Please just fucking load. Yes, it's interesting that uh, my accent is very similar to uh, a certain uh, actor in uh, the film, the Nick Love movie, The Business. And uh, have a, we have a very similar story, because I was watching a, a little interview with him, it was about eight minutes long, and he was being interviewed about his childhood and the fact that he had to leave a certain country for the same sort of reasons and the same sort of racism in the 70s that was like rife, it was everywhere there was racism against not only uh, black people or Asian people, there was racism against pretty much anyone who was an Anglo-Saxon maybe just the Anglo bit, not the Saxon bit that's what it was like in the those are my earliest memories of what it was like living in England, actually. It was just accepted, you know. You're not English, fuck off, mate. That was uh, an acceptable attitude to have back then. So. Funny thing is, uh, in those times, there was so much fucking work that my dad actually... Uh, I can't remember which company he went to but he also went to Ford's and uh, they both wanted like uh, a mechanic you know a senior mechanic kind of thing someone who knew a lot not just a, a lackey or a trainee or whatever and they were so desperate that my dad ended up doing two jobs six hours a day each yeah, he had to kind of work it in there so he'd go really early, do his work for one company. Uh, it was another truck company, so it was like the Ford, uh, you know, the big trucks. But another company as well, I don't know what the other one was. Was it Leyland? But anyway, there was like, there was people screaming for like, you know, people to hire. So there may have been unemployment in like the mid 70s. But that's probably because there's a lot of thick people who couldn't be bothered to learn a skill or couldn't find a skill to learn as well. That That is an aspect of it. It's not like when Thatcher come, come in and you ended up with loads of unemployed people. That's a different situation. That's just like there's no fucking jobs for any cunt. So I think my dad went to work abroad after about half a decade of, uh, well, maybe less than half a decade of Thatcher, just a few years really. I, I don't know what changes she made, but it hurt a lot of businesses, mate. And not small businesses. Or maybe in the case of uh, British Leyland, that's a bit different. I don't know, mate. My point is, back then, they're probably... Uh, there probably wasn't enough shelf stacking jobs to go around but unlike today there weren't people refusing to go and stack shelves in the supermarket because they believe because they're delusional that you know they're going to be the next fucking uh, you know female singer of the year in the UK magic and I can rewind the tape. So you listen to the music a bit more in it. It's a massive win for the retirement fund. I'll probably list these up for 200 quid each, mate. If BC Bill is not BC's quest for tyres, sorry. If that's 125 quid in good condition and complete, then uh, it's a much rarer game than BC's Quest for Tires. Enjoy! I won't be playing it though. 